Welcome back to Conference USA Media Day. We turn our attention now to the Owls of Rice. And joining us, just to my left, head coach Mike Bloomgren. Coach, good to have you with us today. Great to be back. And we've got a couple of outstanding scholar athletes that are going to be joining us from the Rice Owls. Austin Trammell, 2018 Conference USA, honorable mention, uh, led Rice in receptions last year. And also joining us from Rice, Miles Adams, two-time Conference USA honor roll. Gentlemen, good to have you with us. Good to be here. Good to be here. I'll talk to you later. Coach comes first. Sorry, guys. I don't make the rules. No, Coach, I, seriously, I, I'm going back and I'm, I'm looking at your schedule last year. You led Houston by 10 in the third. Late in the second half in a game versus Southern Miss, you closed to 17-15. You led Louisiana Tech in the third. I don't look at the final record. I try to find the stories. You were in a lot of games last year. Yes, we were. And, and what did the team, you think, learn from that experience? Yeah, I think we all learned a lot of things. We learned that we have to find a way to finish. It's the bottom line in our business. It's where we want to get to. We want to be in those situations and take a team to deep water in the fourth quarter so we can come out the other side. So we've done so much to emphasize finish this year mm-hmm. with our team. Uh, another thing is we just have to work on mindset and the ability to finish. And instead of waiting for the other shoe to fall, realizing that me and my brothers together, we're going to find a way to get this done. And, and that's also, I think, in what you and I actually talked about last year at Conference USA Media Day was setting the culture. And the culture being, we're not going to lose this game, we're going to win this game. And I know that sounds trite, but a lot of teams play sometimes not to lose. Absolutely. And I think as you talk about the cultural piece, it's such a big deal to what we're building right now. And it's taken such a big step forward from year zero to year two as we sit here and and we're just thrilled about where our guys are. I I think of it like a tree, you know, and if all we look for is the fruits that that tree is producing uh, and don't nourish the roots, that tree is going to die. But if we build it the right way, it'll produce fruit and sustainable fruit for a long time. And so this culture is getting these guys going. They're showing the 40 new prospects that we brought into right. this team how to do things our way. And then I think recruits see that and want to be a part of it. How different was spring last season to spring practice this year? Night and day. Really? Yes, sir. Talk about it. You know, it was just everybody understanding where to be during those drills, how we're going to practice, how physical it's going to be, and the tempo at which we need to do it. And then also just being more comfortable in the schemes. Uh, you saw that from our coaches and players. So they could really go out there and just play this game that we all love. Well, one of the great lines that I read that Coach talked about uh, after spring, he called his defense, and I quote, pretty freaking dominant. <laughs> that's, that's probably one of the great quotes I've heard coming out of spring. Yes, sir. And, and they were. In what way? And every day, you know, we went to work, and, and there was a couple of days where the offense got the better of them. There was a, a red zone day late in, in spring ball. But for the most part, you just walked away offensively, and they, they had their tail tucked between their legs because we weren't blocking the guys up front. We weren't doing well enough. And that was even without this guy. That was without Miles Adams right. participating in spring and just being a coach. So you can imagine how excited we are to have him back in the fold. Well, I go back and I look at your team and your defensive coordinator, Brian Smith, last year. You had to play a lot of freshmen and sophomores. You had to take your knocks. How big is that for experience this year, though? You know, reps, experience, they're the mother of all learning. And so I look at what Brian Smith has done and how he's packaging this defense together and making our guys so confident in what they do. It's going to pay dividends. I can't wait to see it. Uh, We saw it in the spring. I can't wait to see it on game days this fall. Did the defense progress faster than the offense in spring? Yeah, but I think that's common. I think whether you start a spring ball or whether you start a training camp, that's always the case because I think defense by nature is a destructive force that just knocks things down. You know, you can have 10 dudes on defense fall down and one guy beat somebody and, and the play's over and it's a tackle for loss. Whereas offensively, it's more of a constructive process and you need all 11 people to really do their jobs. Well, George Nyakwal is, is returning, and one of the quotes about him, he's an absolute star in the middle. Talk about his game. Yeah, I think he's that big, bad wolf in the middle of the field. You know, he's a great track athlete, the triple jump, something completely uh, like, like Olympic level, and just runs extremely well, has a great nose for the football, and had a few interceptions that were exciting. But I think he could play down safety. We just need him so much at, at that post safety. He, mm-hmm. he also has proven he can play corner. Wow. It, but it's still the best name in any defense in Conference USA. One of your linebackers, Blaze Aldridge. Yeah, well, I think it's a great name, but also everybody needs to know it. He, second leading tackler last year. Second leading tackler last year and has just been an unbelievable leader for us. And I think he was performing in spring ball as well as any linebacker we played last year in the conference. Now, there was some retooling on your defense in the spring, but the younger players had to step up, and I think for the most part they did in spring, correct? They did, yes, sir. 
and, and who was the ones that maybe stood out? Yeah, I think you look at guys like Antonio Montero and right. Andrew Bird. You know, Andrew Bird stepped in our last game against ODU in his first start and playing mm-hmm. a, a team that had two dominant receivers that made tons of catches against Virginia Tech as, the, as ODU had upset them. And he steps in, and he has three stops on third down and is really productive in that game. And it was great to see Andrew be very productive this spring. Well, let's talk about the offense because you came into spring looking for basically a quarterback. Did you find one? Yeah, you know, we came in, and, and we we knew we had two guys returning that had taken snaps for us, mm-hmm. uh, and Wiley Green and Evan Marshman. And then we have another guy that's going to come into the fold, a uh, graduate transfer from Harvard and Tom Stewart. And, you know, he took over for Harvard last year in the third game and became their team MVP. So this is a, a quarterback battle that we're looking forward to. Uh, I, matter of fact, I wish we could start camp tomorrow so I could see how it's going to unfold. But we're in no rush to name a starter. Uh, a lot of confidence in the two that were there for us last year and their leadership abilities. I think they live the quarterback lifestyle and do a lot of things right. Uh, but we're excited to see what Tom can bring to our team as well. Well, Tom Stewart did a great job because he tied a Harvard record last year for five touchdown passes in one game. I want to go back to to Green. He played four games last year, but he used the red shirt rule, I think, effectively. Now he's got the experience. How does that help him for this year? Oh, I think it means everything. I think these guys would tell you if, if they could have played – uh, four games their year and been able to redshirt. Neither of these guys got the opportunity to redshirt. But you go into spring ball knowing what the game feels like, knowing the speed of the game. You're not trying to have a coach say, oh, you better do this, or because right. they've already lived it. And so, again, they really know how to train that offseason, go into spring ball, and, you know, they don't feel like a freshman. Austin, I want to talk with you. We'll stick with the offense for a little bit. Austin Trammell, Conference USA, honorable mention. Last season led Rice in receiving and receiving yards. Uh, also a great kickoff returner, seventh in Conference USA. This offense this year, going into spring, the uncertainty of a quarterback. Does that bother you, or did you get a report with everybody who might be in the mix to play quarterback? Yeah, you know, it doesn't really bother me at all just because I have a lot of trust in Wiley and in Evan. Um, just the few games that they played last year, they proved that um, they can throw the ball and they can make the right decision. Um, and I have trust in them. They have trust in me. Uh, so I really like them a lot. And Tom coming in, really excited to see what he can do. Um, just throwing the ball around this summer with him, I'm really excited. He has a great arm, great eye. So I'm definitely excited for the quarterback challenge and have full trust in whoever it is. Well, you and Aaron Cephas combined for 102 receptions, over 1,000 yards. What's it like to have somebody that the – defense has to also respect and not so much key on you I mean it, it's it's good just because not all the pressure is on me um, but just our receiver room as a whole uh, it, it, we're all really tight-knit uh, we all work really hard together uh, hang out all the time outside of football so it's really cool to have a room that just gels that well I mean you can see it on the field as well well Miles Adams want to talk to you two times Conference USA honor roll only senior on the two deep right now you played both offense and defense in high school. You were also a power lifter. Didn't think I knew that, did you? I, I was right, right? You were a power lifter. Okay. Yes, sir. Offense and defense. Do you, have you found a home in defense rather than offense now? Uh, I've always found a home in defense. That's why I came to college to play defense. How tough was it, though, to watch this spring and, as Coach said, be a coach on the sideline? At first, it was pretty difficult because as an athlete, you want to compete. You want to be out there with your teammates, your brothers. You want to get out and work, you know, because they're working together to get better, get uh, get better together. But as the spring went on and, you know, my Coach Bloomgren and my position coach, Coach Calhoun, uh, saw fit for me to be a leadership role and help the younger guys in the spring come on and really learn how we do things and how we operate and really bring together to bring that D-line presence that we need for this upcoming season. As you're a senior on this team, kind of the elder statesman, how important is it for this year for all the young players to understand how important is it to play every play as hard as they can? And what do you tell them about how quickly your college career can be over with? Well, I've been in their shoes, and you hear from every freshman, hears it from every senior, and you don't really expect – uh, it to go that fast, but here I am, and I just tell them, take every moment. You know, we're building a culture that we're trying to take every moment, have a sense of urgency, and be present for every moment, and fulfill the objective at at hand, and just uh, really just take the proper steps to do what we need to do. Austin, how about the fact from your standpoint on the offensive side? I mean, you turn around and all of a sudden your career, 
It's, you know, it's almost over. Do you try to convey that to the younger players at Rice and let them know that you're building something special here? Absolutely. Um, just honestly, the other day, I, it hit me. I'm going to be a junior. Like yeah. I'm, a, I'm an upperclassman. It felt like I just got here. I just played my first college <laughs> football game in, uh, in Australia against uh, Coach Bloom or Stanford. Um, so it, it's crazy to think how fast it goes. And, and I always tell our younger guys that um, to really, like, think about where you are right now. Like, think about, like, when we're conditioning every morning uh, off season. to, like, really, like, take it all in because it doesn't last very long. Um, and you're going to miss it when it's gone. So, Oh, Coach, I want to talk about your schedule, too. You open up at Army, then host Wake Forest before playing Texas and Baylor. Difficult schedule. But I'm kind of a glass-half-full kind of guy. Do you tell your players this is a great challenge? You're playing some great teams. I mean, how do you approach that schedule? Without question. These guys are working their butts off every day for the opportunity to play those teams, and that's what they signed up for. They signed up to come to Rice to get a world-class degree and play big-time college football. Not because it's easy, but because it's hard and worth it. And so that's exactly what we want to do, and we're so thrilled we get the opportunity to do it again this year. A couple of broad stroke questions here. The target, uh, the targeting is going to be dictated a lot by instant replay. I'm asking all the coaches this. Is that a good thing? Because now we don't have guys being thrown out. They've got to actually look at it. You know, I think one thing we worked so hard for is these 12 opportunities were pro- that were promised in the fall. And so anytime anybody got wrongly thrown out of a game, I think that's a really scary movie. And so yeah. I think going to replay and at least confirming it is going to be better for our game because everybody wants to make our game safer. Mm-hmm. But at the same, in the same breath, we certainly don't want anybody taken out of a game uh, f- for something they didn't do. Transfer rule, good or bad? Hmm. Uh, I don't think it's good for college football. I don't think it's good for players or coaches or institutions. But uh, as long as we have the opportunity to bring in grad transfers within the rules, uh, right now we're going to continue to because we've got unbelievable things to offer grad transfers at Rice, like an online MBA program and mm-hmm. things like that to get a Rice degree and really be the, uh, the cream of the crop in terms of people wanting to attend our place for grad school. Well, the only other thing I'd like to ask is if Miles can come to my house and do my answering machine. At my house. You got pipes, dude. You really do. I mean, you, I could see you sitting in a, a disc jockey booth going, yeah, you're listening to FM 105. Hey, 105.7, smooth R&B. Oh, my gosh, I love it. <laughs> okay, I'll be your agent then. How's that? <laughs> Sounds good with me. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Best of luck. Coach, always good to see you, you, my friend. Great to see you. You guys have a great season. We come thank back, we'll talk to Southern Miss. We continue Conference USA Media Day.